at the Albert van Abbe house and my name is Albert van Abbe. That's weird and it's because my great-grandfather had a collection of art that he gave to the city of Eindhoven together with a museum. It's across the street from this building, so he used to live here. Over the years it was called Albert van Abbe house and my grandfather and my uncle are called Albert van Abbe, so I'm the third. And I'm, my studio is now located on the first floor, actually in the bedroom of my grandpa which is also weird, but it feels nice. Uh, so Eindhoven is still an ideal place uh, to live for me because it's close to a lot of airports. It's sort of a sleepy town. Um, it used to be uh, bigger in techno. It had labels like uh, Jux Upbeats here and the S Junkies, but it's a city that you can still do uh, projects in relatively easy. It's relatively easy to connect with people and institutions. What is also an advantage is that the high-tech campus is here and the technical university. So there's a lot of um, tech happening in the city and I found out over the last years that I can bring across my ideas about instruments or for example arts and tech ideas. So I'm looking of ways to scale up my practice in a way where I'm not just a DJ producer anymore but also doing the art projects and developing instruments um, or different hardware and software relating to arts and technology. Yeah, so now let's go upstairs and check out the studio. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about my setup now. Um, I guess I have a very minimalistic approach, you could say. I just try to uh, work through a lot of gear and uh, try it out and see what I like, what I don't like, and also, uh, yeah, resell it again. I would say I'm really not much of a gear collector. Let's actually start with my own sequencer. So I'm, I'm developing more and more my own instruments, also for playing my, my live AV, for example. There's a cool video of that of me playing at, um, at Next Museum in Amsterdam. I produced this um, AV software so I could play live right there. It's a generative system, so it's more like a visual synthesizer. Uh, yeah, and then on the audio side, for example, I, I made this, uh, this sequencer together with um, the city of Eindhoven and um, a professor helped me with this project and a local prototyping company. It uses old MIDI to generate new MIDI notes. So in there is a lot of my old music in MIDI and on the fly in real time, it can do real new um, uh, MIDI notes. And what's special about it is that it has an Ethernet output, so it can also trigger uh, light systems and, and, and visuals at the same time. We're going to have a, a bit more, um, a better look at it in, in a separate video. So I go through the functions basically and, uh, and see what this does and what makes it unique in the, in the sequencer world. Then moving on, I recently got um, uh, this uh, 303 clone by Cyclone. And a friend from my Dan from Nijmegen did a uh, uh, lot of modifications on it. You can also see it has all the uh, separate ins and outputs, so it's more like a modular uh, 303. It's based on the, um, um, the dev Devilfish modifications of the original 303. Just, this total package is just a lot uh, cheaper because um, yeah, to get um, the original 303 with the Devilfish modifications is quite steep and expensive. Uh, yeah, I just uh, leave the controllers on the side. I use them to play live and bring whichever piece of gear I want to bring at that for that show and, and make a setup that works. I'm always thinking about uh, yeah, how to carry the, the least amount of uh, uh, luggage. From Electron I got this uh, drum machine that I actually use as a, a sampler uh, usually. So I build my own drum sounds and um, I trigger them with this. It still works really nicely, I think. I'm still in doubt if I should um, swap it for the, um, the original machine drum. Uh, I think that's a super interesting drum computer as well. Uh, so the reason I have the setup like this is that I want to work more in a way where I do uh, sound soup or like making a broth of sounds. Uh, I like to just fiddle about and, and design sounds. And then when I really want to finish tracks, I just go into Ableton and, and finish music there. Uh, that way it's very f flexible and fast and I don't really have to think about the ergonomics of things in my studio or having a steady spot for a synthesizer, which I don't really, I don't really like that idea. Um, so that's why I have the table like this. It sort of feels like uh, uh, the store studio that Jochem has. Of course he has a lot more gear, but um, uh, this works for me. Just have the table here try to get the gear that I like at that moment and try to design sounds with that that I can afterwards 
use into Ableton to finish tracks. And the same goes for me going to Dembos to the Willem II studios where they have a lot of vintage synthesizers. I just go there and record sounds and bring them here to finish them in Ableton. And then on here I recently got the T1 Torso from, from Torso Electronics. It's a Euclidean synthesizer. I really like it. It has a lot of out CV outputs to control modular gear. And I really like this new like innovative way of sequencing. Um, yeah. And then in general, I would say I'm very much into granular synthesis because um, uh, it's easier to move away from classic synthesizer sounds. Um, so recently I'm really into the morphogen as well as uh, beats from mutable instruments and also patching them so they work together in a more like a generative sound uh, matter. And I also like to trigger those with uh, also either the T1 or my, my own new sequencer. And, and yeah, in the mix with uh, getting gear from Make Noise, uh, I also got this Trega to, to play around with. I really like it as a like effects box in combination with the, with the modules. Um, yeah, that's basically it. So I'm always trying to, as you can also see here, just uh, try to get rid of gear that I don't use and uh, have the, only the gear here that I like to try out at this moment so I don't uh, get swamped in, uh, and too much um, hardware. Uh, we're at uh, Paul Panic Attack Studio in Eindhoven. We've been collaborating for a long time, I think 20 plus years on this Panic Attack asset project uh, that we're doing live. And we've did a few records over the years, starting from 2005 already. So a long time ago and yeah this year we celebrate yeah this 20 plus years with a few uh, live gigs probably this year <laughs>